Okay, now, we've done the hard part, we've put the stand together, we're going to get to all the easy bits now, and we're going to assemble the base of the machine and put the crank handle on, and then we'll go on to the next stage. So we've got to take our base and put it upside down, two thumb screws, we now have to put the ripper stopper post in. That's the ripper stopper post. It's a okay. funny looking thing here. And we have a couple of parts to put on. First, we take one of the screws. We put the spring first. Then the washer. And then we take this, the big nut, adjuster nut, and we put it small side on first. So we screw the small side in first. Screw that nut in about half to three quarters of the way. We need to leave a little bit of slack to be able to get our cylinder in. Make sure that it's going backwards and forwards. There's our base together. Our base is now assembled and we'll put the handle on the, the wooden handle on the crank handle and we'll put the shaft and the various washers into the crank handle. So we've got this new modified crank handle. Great expense to the management. We take the shaft and we put it through the middle of the crank handle. We then put a washer onto the end of it and it screws onto the crank nice. Nice. and you will need for this, which isn't supplied, an allen key wrench of some sort or a screwdriver with a square end and you need to tighten that crank handle up. We will then place the little ferrule which is going to turn your row counter onto the crank handle and there's a hole in that ferrule and that goes onto the pin on the crank and if you can see that pin there and then we put our shaft in just push our shaft in through there and our crank handle is ready to put onto the base now put the washer the second washer into the hole in the base there for ready for the crank to go on and we can just Wind that crank handle on into that thread and using the handle and when it's come up tight it will stop cranking. We then need a second washer in behind there and just put this at this stage put that nut on loosely and that's the locking nut for the crank handle. So the whole base of our machine is now assembled. Right, we're now on to assembling our camshell and as you can see the camshell has come with the pointer on it. It's come with the threaded screw on there and the spring holder. On the older model machines you will not have this automatic heel lifting apparatus so just please disregard this piece if you have one of the older black machines but for this new green machine this is the needle lifting apparatus and we'll put that on first. Right, we're going to put together now the um, uplift cam, so you need to have it facing upwards with that raised part to, towards the top and you take the little cam and you put that in so that the path is also facing upwards. We then thread our little screw into the hole in that cam. It's a little bit tricky and just go gently with it so you don't cross the thread and bring it about halfway up about the halfway up position and that cam now slides into the camshell and is attached by the two little screws which are screwed up one side second side Back to the first side to tighten. We don't tighten up one side first. Um, do it evenly so that it sits in nice and even. And there it is, nice and snug as a bug. Just test it and you'll see that that little cam lifts up into the path very easily. We now take our stitch cam and the stitch cam is made for up to a 70 up to an 80 slot cylinder 84 slot that's okay 
any higher number cylinders you will need one of the shallower stitch cams. We will also be making very shortly and putting on the market a stitch cam for 48 slot cylinders, 54 slot cylinders, so they will be available very shortly. Um, can also be used for 60. Spring first, then the V-cam, and then our knob facing down that way. Whoops, wrong way, that way. And just screw it down about halfway. Okay, apart from putting in the side cams, which we'll do when we finally assemble the machine, uh, that's our cam shell all complete. Right, this is the assembly of the gear ring, and this is very simple and straightforward, and you will do your adjustments later. And we first take the gear ring, we need our yarn guide and it must face back in that way so onto there and back that way. If you face it around that way you won't be able to knit. We then put the washer and the screw in. And my apologies for the silver screw, I actually lost the screw. Just proves that I'm actually not quite perfect. We take our yarn guide with its screw and washer the washer on the screw and down into the yarn guide through the hole in the yarn guide stem. We're not worrying about any adjustment at this stage, we're just getting the thing together. And we're putting the little nut on the back and screwing it up. Just finger tight at this stage. Just pull the little piggy tail back, that little piece is the piggy tail and that holds the yarn in the guide. So we're going to put the row counter together and we take our dial, our counter dial which has got numbers on it, stamped on it from 1 to 90. We take the little brass washer and we fit that into the dial, the big end into the top of the dial. So there's a smaller part there and there's a larger part but it'll only go one way. So that's stuck in there. The pointer on there and you'll see why those ends match now. We then take the screw, which is the tightening screw or adjusting screw which holds the pointer wherever you put it when, you, when you've when you undone it. And facing you, you need this to the left. If you do it that way, it's wrong. That's wrong, right. And just screw it down. Now your counter should move freely and spin with, with the point out staying in the one place of course. If it doesn't, it's not going to work. So that's the row counter done and that's the screw that you will put the row counter onto the crank handle with.